The world of photojournalism has always been dominated by men, which means that front page photos and images of other world events are seen from a male perspective. One 2018 survey found that worldwide only 18% of photojournalists were women. Women Photograph is a nonprofit group working to elevate more female and non-binary photographers. They've published a new book called What We See, Women and Non-Binary Perspectives Through the Lens. It includes 100 images from both up-and-comers and industry veterans. Daniela Zaltzman is the founder of Women Photograph. She was also one of the curators of the photos in the book. Uh, Daniela, in the introduction to this book, you write that photojournalists are tasked with a unique privilege, teaching others how to see. Why are so many, uh, the vast majority of people teaching us how to see white Western males, and what's the effect of that? I think photojournalism remains an incredibly classist industry. It's really difficult to graduate from a university program with student debt, with no access to generational wealth, and then think about becoming a freelance photojournalist where you may have to invest $10,000 into gear and not have any kind of job security to hope that you can work for the best newspapers and magazines in the country. Um, but you know, I can say that the impact of that is a, a huge ethical crisis, because when we are seeing the world and building our visual record almost exclusively through the lens of male photographers, male photojournalists, we are not only missing out on stories that those photographers may not have access to, we're missing out on stories that they don't think should be prioritized. And in turn, we're teaching our audience that those stories don't matter. So making sure that the documentary photography community is as diverse as the communities, the people we hope to cover is absolutely critical. Well, let's get to some of the photos from the book. The first one is family bonding. This is a photograph from Saiza Bakani, who is a uh, Filipina photographer currently based in the United States. She herself has worked as a domestic worker, and her mother continues to work as a domestic worker in Hong Kong. And this is actually a photograph of her own family. Something that we wanted to really address in the book is the fact that a lot of photojournalists work as outsiders, and we're having increasingly nuanced conversations about the fact that we need inside and outside perspectives for holistic and meaningful journalism, but for the longest time, almost all photojournalists have worked as outsiders. The next one is uh, Dias Eternos, uh, a project uh, called Eternal Days. Again, I think this is an incredible example of an image that we might not have seen in mainstream media without the attention of a woman photographer. Um, this is documentation of a women's prison in Venezuela, uh, one where you can see the living conditions are very grim. Uh, women do not necessarily have access to justice at the speed at which they should. They are crammed into these cells, um, I think in this particular instance, with 22 women living in one very small space. And again, you know, between access and interest and hoping to focus on the story. I, you know, I think without um, Anna's work, we, we might never hear about these women. Talk about the choice between black and white, which was the, the first picture we saw, the family portrait, and color. This is a very grim situation in this women's prison, but vibrant colors. I think that's a very intentional choice that makes images feel sometimes a little more calm. But I think it's also important to remember that even when you're working in grim situations, images don't necessarily have to just convey trauma. You know, I think there are uh, aspects of that photograph, of Anna's photograph, that even while these are women in prison in very severe situations, this photo is about family and community and the way that they're all coming together to survive this ordeal. The next photograph is uh, called Portrait for A. This is an incredible long-term project that photographer Smita Sharma uh, has worked on for years. Uh, it was published uh, as a long-form piece in National Geographic about sex trafficking of young girls uh, between India and Bangladesh. Um, and you know, something that photojournalists have to contend with on a day-to-day -day basis is how do we make sure that we are centering the safety of the people who trust us with their stories? Uh, and in this particular case, these these are girls, they're underage, they have dealt with trafficking and sexual trauma, and so it was of utmost importance to Smita that she make sure that she protect the identity and the image of every single one of these women who she was trusted to photograph, and I think she did an incredibly poetic, very powerful job. The next image is from uh, Afghanistan, it's called Mayhem. 
This is, you know, a, a really classic example of a space that a male conflict photographer just absolutely would not have been able to gain access to. Um, you know, Kiana, uh, though Iranian, has worked in Afghanistan for years and years, and in 2021, with Taliban retaking control and explicitly targeting women, girls, and women's education in particular, this is a an image that was taken in the aftermath of a school bombing. She was able to walk into this space, um, and with her knowledge of the community and the culture was was able to make this photograph of women mourning their children, their daughters. As you say, this is an image a man couldn't have captured because they just are not comfortable because of the culture. Uh, it, it's a different situation if a man walked in. Or it may not have existed at all. I think it's very likely that a man would have been physically barred from entering that space. And so if we want to see and hear stories from those spaces, we need to make sure that women from those communities and women in general are behind the lens as well. Uh, the next one is the flying cholitas. I love this photograph so much. This is a Brazilian photographer, Luisa Dor, who uh, came to the story. These are uh, Aymara and Quechua women um, who have created this incredible reversal where they have taken clothing that was part of the sort of colonial imposition that they were forced to wear when they worked in, in sort of service to uh, colonizers. Um, and now they use them as sort of these powerful decorative costumes um, as they fight. Uh, and it's both this other world and spectacularly beautiful and kind of funny image that I that I think is a really wonderful moment of levity in the book. This is a great one. Uh, the next one was taken in Kenya. It's called Last Act. This is from Ugandan photographer Sarah Weiswa, who has lived all over East Africa and is an incredible photographer. And, you know, she speaks very explicitly in the book about how she wanted to subvert the imagery that she is so used to of particularly outside photographers coming into poor communities in East Africa and making photographs that we've seen before of young children in poor neighborhoods in Nairobi in Kampala. Um, and, you know, these are, are two young girls doing ballet, which she comments is very often associated with upper class children and children of privilege, but they're still having this wonderful, happy experience and, and that can define their identity as well. Tell me about the organization you founded, Women Photograph. Women Photograph is a nonprofit I created in 2017. We have 1,400 women and non-binary members based in about 120 countries. We also are a grant-making organization. Uh, we hold skills building workshops annually. We run a mentorship program for early career photojournalists. My co-curator on the book, Sarah Iko, is part of that team alongside Mallory Benedict and Pierre Moore. The book is What We See, Women and Non-Binary Perspectives Through the Lens. One of the curators is Daniela Zaltzman. Daniela, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.